Okay, welcome to MCO 455 lesson, which is on getting started on the project. In this lesson, we're going to look at not only how the project is supposed to work, but also on how to structure the coding for this project. All the information for this project can be found in your lab section, not your theory section, and on your lab section will be found under labs. We're going to be looking at that shortly. The purpose of the project is to provide you with more programming experience with the hardware devices that will be tested on lab test two, and lab test two is worth 15% of your mark. And as you know, you have to pass both the lab and the theory to pass the course, which means you have to have at least 50% on the lab portion after lab test two, and 15 out of 40 is a big chunk of mark. So right at this point, anybody, and I've posted already what your current lab average to date is, anybody that has less than 20% of lab average to date has already failed the course. The concept here is if you have 20%, 20% is 5 out of 25, and you need 15 out of 15 just to get a 20 out of 40 to pass the course. Okay, so it's very important that you do well on the second lab test. Now let's take a look at a couple of examples of calculations because you know what your final lab average to date is at this point. So if you have a lab average to date of 80.0%, uh, that means that you have 0.8 times 25, which is 20 out of the 25 marks that you had. That means that you got 20 out of 25. Even if you didn't do the second lab test, you got 20 out of 40. You basically passed the lab portion, which means you can still pass the course. But if you want to see what your maximum mark is, that's 20 out of 25, right? Plus 15 out of 15, which would give you 35 out of 40, which would give you a maximum possible lab mark of 87.5%. If your lab average to date, which has been posted already, is 65%, 0.65 times 25 gives you 16.25 out of 25. To pass the course, you need 3.75 out of 15, which is 25% on the lab test just to pass the lab portion. But if you want, you can figure out, well, 16.25 out of 25 plus 15 out of 15, if I get perfect, would give me 31.25 out of 40, which is a maximum of 78%. So based on your lab average to date that you've got now, you should be able to figure out, you know, what you're going, whether or not you can pass. If you're below 20, you can't. And if you can pass, what is the minimum you're going to have to get on your lab test to pass? And what is the maximum as well that you can possibly get? Uh, we've done all the labs at this point. We're working on the project here. And uh, basically, when we get to two weeks of this, and this is the last real lecture I'm going to have with you guys um, about anything with the project. The project you're not handing in, but the more of it you can get accomplished, the better you're going to do on that lab test worth 15 out of 40% of your mark. Now, you're going to get feedback as to how well you did on lab test two, but when you get to the final exam in a couple of weeks, you will get absolutely no feedback. And the reason for this is they want to make sure that, um, you know, before the promotion meeting, you don't know what your final mark is. So you'll know 80% of your mark, and you'll know based on the lab whether or not you passed the lab portion, which is a big piece of this. But the final exam, you're going to get absolutely no feedback on that because after the promotion meeting, then your marks go live, and then you can ask what your specific marks were on the final exam. But if you go to labs, it tells you exactly how it's supposed to work. Okay, and this is uh, this burger world, blue fruit app, blah, 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 blah. So if you're doing a project, and you're going to see this when we start looking at project layout in terms of coding, you could probably copy and paste this right into the description portion of your programmer's block. Now, it also says to click on this link to access the bin file. The best way to do this is if you're using uh, Firefox. Then you can actually download the bin file and see how it works, how it's supposed to work. And this is another way of actually checking out all your hardware to make sure your LCD, your four-digit display, your passive infrared motion detector is working, and your blue fruit device is also working, because if it is working, then it should work exactly as it says up here. This is your project layout. The title is going to be Burglar Alarm System. And uh, so these are some of the things that you would set up in some sort of project like that, or in TPJ if you want to do your technical projects course. So you're going to have a programmer's block with a bur uh, title, author, which is your name, student ID, and your lab section date, which is the project was started, and the full description is what we just looked at earlier. Now, these are some of the things that you should have above the main. Uh, the include files are going to be the header files for embed, as well as the various devices, because you know that the LCD has its own header file. 
and so on. So the device you're going to use in this will have to have all their header files. And what you're going to do is put all those header files in the include section here. The hardware pin configuration section, so you're going to have to set that up as to where is my LCD connected, where's my four digit display connected. So you're going to have to put all those in there. Uh, you also have something called a global variable declaration section because what we're going to be using for this project and for most microcontroller stuff, this is what you do. But for global variables, when you start using for microcontrollers, there's no need for parameter passing or for a function uh, prototype will be void, some function name and void. And that's going to be it. So you're not putting anything in, you're not getting anything out. It makes it pretty simple. Your um, void, function name, void, semicolon can be a regular function or it can be an interrupt service routine, which we're going to be looking at a little bit more as part of this because we're triggering that on our passive infrared motion detector. And it can also be a periodic timer interrupt in the same form or something more advanced. It can be a thread. If you've heard of multi-threading and stuff, that's what we're talking about here. All the same definitions under embed. So why not use global variables and make our life so much easier? Now the global variables will be declared in the uh, global variable declaration section, but they're gonna be initialized after you declare your local variables in the main portion of your code. Use of global variables means that any function can both access the current value of a global variable and can also change the value as well, which greatly simplifies your programming. You don't have to worry about passing anything in. And an interrupt service routine, which we're going to have because we've looked at, as I said, the passive infrared motion detector, it's going to, as it changes voltage when it detects motion, it's going to change a variable from being maybe a zero to a one saying motion has been detected and so on. And there's more details about that as we go through the project, because what we want to do is not only do you enable an interrupt to t take place or set up the interrupt to take place, you also have to enable and disable it at the right time. And that's going to be part of what you're going to learn about in doing this project.